Hey guys and welcome back to this banner video. Today I'm going to show you how to make your microphone sound better in OBS. So basically right now I don't have any effects on my voice. So I'm actually going to show you which filters I apply in this video in order to get a way better sound that I personally like because this is after all a personal preference as well. But I'll generally show you how to make your microphone sound better in OBS. But first guys if you want you can go down on this video in the comment section and click on the first comment that I pinned. This will bring you to my Fiverr. And here as you can see on my Fiverr you can get a logo or a banner or both for your YouTube channel if you want. But now back to the video. So we're here in OBS and actually the first thing I want to do with you guys is go to settings. And we're actually going to go to audio and you're going to look to the input and output. So I have this first desktop audio to my speaker. So that's what I hear. So this is like desktop audio. It's like the desktop sounds like Spotify when it plays music or YouTube videos. It's basically the desktop audio. And so that's the one right here. And then of course the most important one is going to be my microphone. Now in your case you also just want to select your microphone here. Now I have a Blue Yeti so that's the one right here. And these I can change right now but make sure they're on the 48 kilohertz and then stereo. Yet you click apply here and then you click OK. Now make sure, by the way, when you're using your microphone, it can be just out of the box. But what's very important is actually the distance from your microphone. Now you don't want to be too close because you will get boominess. But also you don't want to be too far because you'll hail the room. And you don't want to hear the room, obviously. Now because the Blue Yet is a bit different, I generally have it one, maybe one and a half finger away from the microphone. But how you can generally test this is basically make sure that you can hear yourself. Gradually go backwards. And then you make sure that, that your real life voice sounds the same as how it's recording. So basically what you can do is take off one headphone. So you, you keep one headphone on your ear and the other headphone you remove so that you expose your ear and that you can hear in real life so that you can basically hear your voice at the same time in real life with the headphone removed in one ear at the same time the other headphone will still be on and you hear in the software how it sounds and as I said, you can go backwards slowly and see whenever your voice sounds the same in real life and in the software. And then you'll know you're at a good distance from a microphone. Of course, gain pays also a part in that. Always make sure the gain is not too loud, never too loud. Because you always get distorted, maybe even clipping recordings. So just make sure that in the Blue Yeti, I have it one quarter up, not more. You can go it all the way around, but I only have it one quarter up for the Blue Yeti because I know I don't need more. So that's what you generally want. You want it halfway, maybe in general. Once again, this really depends on microphones, but you want to make sure that in any case, it is not too loud. I also have a pop filter and a foam. A foam is very optional. It just makes my voice a little bit warmer, which I like. Now, pop filter is very important. It removes the sounds. So that's uh, important to actually control that because if you don't have that, those kind of sounds can go through pretty quickly and you don't want that. In any case, that's some general tips there I can give. Now, actually going in right here, I'm going to go to advanced audio properties. And as you can see, as I said earlier here, I have my desktop audio and the mic. So basically two channels here. And if you want to hear yourself speak, you can go to monitor off and click on monitor and output. So now when I speak, and then this is uh, very annoying, I'm not used to uh, hearing myself talk, but basically now I can hear myself talk and judge how my voice is going to be. Now, I will keep it up for myself because uh, I'm not really used to working with uh, hearing myself. I don't really like it. But in any case, it's to show you guys how to actually do that. So just going to close this right now. And so now we're going to get into the important things here. So we're going to go back here, the three dots of the microphone, by the way, make sure it's the microphone you're at. Click it and then go to filters. And here as you can see we have nothing yet. We're going to do the little plus here in the corner. I'm going to start with the gain. Now my voice is already quite up the gain. But you'll see later that it will actually go down. So right now I'm going to put it at 3. About 390 is what I usually have. Now it's a bit louder and annoying at the moment. But I'll show you later why we have to bump it at the start. By the way, make sure to follow the order that I do as well. If Also, if you're making music and you're in a mixing process, this order also applies. So it is very important to actually follow this. And you want to make sure that you always start with a gain. So that you first boost the gain of the sound in question. Now we've done that in general, if needed, we're going to use a noise suppression. I'm actually not going to use it in this video because I don't think this integrated one is really good. It's not my favorite one, really not. I uh, don't really like it. You can play with this one if you want to use it, but um, you actually have an NVIDIA, I believe. One that is, if you have an NVIDIA, you will actually have able to have more um, settings that are actually quite interesting. But the way we have it right here really isn't that interesting, so I wouldn't advise you to use it. So you can right click on it and do remove. Now there's actually a second option here you can add. You can also do right click and add here by the way. It's actually going to be a noise gate. Now this could actually be very interesting especially if you have a lot of background noise. So a lot of like noisy neighbors or anything from a fan also in your room maybe. Really this is more although in extreme cases I don't really see the use of me doing this because I'll show you a little bit later why I don't really need it. Now my room doesn't have a lot of acoustics so you already hear my room quite well unfortunately. But once again you have to play with these two. You could do the attack time a bit quicker here so you can bring this down and play with these two here but um, once again I'm not going to use it in this video. If you have a quite 
calm room, let's say, in general, you wouldn't need it either. Now we are although going into something very important now. So we're going to do odd again, which is going to be a free bent equalizer. So it's going to be an EQ. Now an EQ is actually going to control the lows, the mids and the highs of a certain sound. Now in this case, it's my voice. And basically, as I'll play around, I'll show you how it works. Now the highs, you don't want it to be too high because the it gets more thinner and crispier. I don't like that sound. But you do want to bring it up a little bit for the clarity in your voice. Now personally, as you can see, if I do this, and here in the change in my voice that it gets a bit clearer. You know, my voice gets clearer. It sounds less muffled. And I'm just going to bring this to... I'm going to bring this to 630, what I'm used to. Now, same for the mids. This is, of course, going to be the frequencies in the middle. You want to bring this rather backwards. Makes it sound a bit more professional. You can also use the little arrows here to be more precise or actually type the amount. Now, this is going to be, of course, personal to you. You don't have to copy my settings. You really have to look for yourself, what you like and what sounds best for you and your microphone. Now, lows. I already have a low voice, but um, I do want to boost it a little bit because I like a little bit of lows. Also a bit of warmth. Not too much because too much will give you boominess. It will make you sound like you're... Um, I want again really muffled and muddy it will sound so really what you want is to make it a little boost make sure that it's not too much you know it works for me it's something also that i like as i said like to boost the lows a bit that's a preference but we're going to continue here and add an expander there we go i'm gonna put this uh, actually gonna keep this on two here you can put this to three if you want with ratio now this one here you want to make sure that this one is not too much up so you don't want to bring this up too much really don't and you also don't want to bring it down too much we want to find a good middle point I could say from between 30 and 40 is good. I generally use 37 actually. When you talk really quiet on a recording, uh, you still sound normal, you know? So it'd still be, if you talk like a really low voice, you'll still hear it to a certain degree that people still be able to hear you speak, you know? Even though you might be whispering or whatever. Do the attack quicker here. I'm gonna put this pretty much all the way down. Release, you can do 100. And we can actually leave the rest on zero. Now I'm gonna pretty much do the opposite. I'm gonna make sure that there's a compressor on it. Now compressor can be very subtle, especially in the world of mixing, for example. What we're especially gonna do here is actually control the... Let's put this ratio down, by the way. I wanna do a 350, actually. It's the loudness, so... I'm actually gonna bring this down. And uh, now this is, for example, if you go something really hard, if you click on your keyboard, or you rage, <laughs> it's also possible that you rage on a recording or a stream, or sur or accidentally touch something really loud, it makes a loud noise. Well, in this case, it wouldn't actually make sure that um, the people who are listening to the recording in question wouldn't actually be shocked by like loud noises or anything. You would actually be able to control these loud noises. Same, I'm gonna bring this down, 100, let's keep it that way. But actually gonna put the gain a bit up here. I'm gonna say it's around seven. Okay, and now actually the last thing is going to be a limiter. This limits the sounds, obviously, I think you could have guessed that. Minus 3 can do to minus 1 to minus 3. Now you can see this as the, the threshold really, well, what, this, what it says here, the limiter of the sound, so it can go above minus 3 dB, you know, so it limits at that amount. You can go to 0 approximately. I think minus 3 is pretty safe. It's pretty safe in any case, you know. But yeah, guys, there you go. Those are all of the settings that I generally use here in OBS. I really like my settings. As I said, they're personal to me. You have to look for yourself and for your microphone, what honestly sounds best to you. But that really is a preference after all. So as I said, it's very important to start with a gain and like a noise gate if you're going to use one. They go into DQ and then afterwards you do a compressor, generally speaking. And at the end, you want to use a limiter in order to limit the sound and make really sure that it has a certain threshold. So make sure you also follow it in that order because in this case, the order is very important. Keep that in mind order where you put these filters in is important in any case guys you can just close it here and uh, you'll be able to record this should really work on most microphones really do and make even cheap microphones sound very professional in any case guys if you have any questions leave them down below thank you guys for watching please leave a like would be really nice subscribe would also be really nice and i'll see you guys in the next video bye